I just drove 800 miles to test drive this very unique motorcycle. I'm gonna tell you guys why right now. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. You're thinking, uh, Sean, that's a black streak glide. Literally the most unrare motorcycle ever to exist. And, and that, to be honest, that's pretty true. If you wanna fit in with all the Harley guys and you don't wanna shake things up, this is the bike you get. The same bike that every other rider has, a black FLHX with mini apes. But this bike is actually different. This is, what makes this unusual, is this is actually a stage four Street light, the highest of all the stages that are on this poster at almost every Harley Davidson dealership you could find. Now, most guys who are modifying their motorcycles, they stop at stage one. And let's be honest, it's stage one is just for looks. It gives you a little bit more power. That's intake and exhaust. And it's just so you bike sounds what most people consider to be sounds better and looks louder. And it's just for looks, let's, let's be honest. But for those people out there who need that big power, you need all the power Harley has to offer without, you know, without just buying a, a race crate motor from them, all the power that these blocks can squeeze out, then this might be what you need. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, okay, Sean, how much does stage four really cost? And how much power does it really add? I'm gonna get to that, but first, I have to address all the naysayers out there. All the people out there who are watching, and they're thinking this. Oh, uh, Sean, uh, Harley Davidsons aren't fast and they're never gonna be fast, so this is stupid. Uh, my 20-year-old 600 CBR Honda is faster than that motorcycle. Sean, your haircut looks stupid, you're dumb. Now, all these are valid concerns, but the problem is the people who are asking those questions don't understand power sports. For the exact same reason why putting a bigger engine on a scooter, putting a bigger engine on a lawnmower, but just putting a bigger engine on anything makes everything more fun. And that's because there's two basic rules to power sports. One, everything with wheels and a motor is probably fun. Two, everything with wheels and a motor is more fun when you make it more powerful. So I understand if you don't love the street glide or even Harley Davidson, that's fine. But you, what you have to understand is that this is one of the most popular Harley Davidsons they've ever made. So a lot of people do like them. And obviously there's something about it that must be really likable. And that means making this bike more powerful is always gonna be a good idea. It's like someone rolls up with a V8 powered bar stool and you say, oh, my car is faster. You're, you're missing the point. It's a V8 powered bar stool. That's cool. Let's jump on it and see how fast, go 30 miles an hour on a bar stool. And yes, your CBR 600 probably is faster than this motorcycle, but this is gonna be a little more comfortable on a long trip and someone else's car is faster than your CBR. So like, you know, rocket ships are faster. There's always something faster. So don't be so quick to bash someone else and their thing. Because just because something's faster, it does not take away from the other thing that's slower of how much fun it can be or how much joy it brings to the person riding. And for the haircut comments, my wife said it looked pretty good. So forget you guys. So this is the denim black street glide from 2010, almost 12 years old, not almost, ag actually 12 years old. And the previous owner spent over $6,000 just in modifications performance modifications to get it to this shape. Now the way the stages are set up, it's advantageous that you go through the stages. Don't, don't just go through two, because you're gonna missing out on a lot of power. Go through one, and then two, and then three, and then four. Now here's a picture of the breakdown of the different stages. This bike's had intake, exhaust, and tuner, a cam upgrade, big bore cylinders, and pistons, and new high flow screaming eagle heads, and a bigger throttle body. Those are the main high dollar components. Then you had a bunch of other smaller components that you needed, you know, gaskets and stuff like that, just a and tuner, and to, just to fit it all in, just to make it work properly. And now all this work took this motorcycle from around 60 horsepower and 85 foot pounds of torque to 111 horsepower and 107 foot pounds of torque. That's almost double the horsepower and like 30% improved of the torque. It, it, it's, it's a pretty big change. Now I'm no stranger to fast Harley Davidsons. So let's take it for a spin and see how it actually puts the power to the ground. All right, so let's go fire this thing up and take it for a spin. All 
All right, guys, before we do the test drive, let's do the words of wisdom. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 15, 13. Put on my amazing M1 Moto Gloves. The baddest gloves in the world. You can buy them. Click on the link. Click on the link in the description where you can find them. All right, so guys, if you're wondering where I'm at, I'm at Harley Davidson of Columbia, Tennessee. These guys were nice enough to let me uh, test drive this motorcycle. So a couple things I'm looking for. Um, I heard this over and over again back in the days when they had like the tire shredder kits and they were really modifying these twin cams. Um, what they were saying was, you modify them too much, you get too much power at them, they're just not streetable anymore. They're just not fun, you, you know, you, the clutch is too hard to pull in and it's just too jerky and the cam's too lobey and it's, it's just not fun to ride. Um, so I want to see if that's the case with this. I don't think it is. I don't think this hit those limits yet. Um, normally with, with the Harley Davidson stages, they that, that's part of their goal. They want to keep it. They want to give you the guidelines. They want to give you the guidelines of what you need to do to make your bike faster, but also still reliable and still streetable. That's why, I mean, almost all these parts that they threw in there were, were Harley Davidson parts. Now, there's a lot of good aftermarket companies out there. Um, a lot of them, a lot of them we're using on our Road King build to kind of take you to that next level. Let's see what this thing's got. Hold up. Third gear. The second gear. You all ready? It's not bad. It's not bad. It is, it's, it's more powerful, days more power than the stock twin cam. The stock twin cam was a, was a good motor. Um, I've had multiple twin cams with well over 100,000 miles or just near 100,000 miles. I actually had one that had 99,000 miles on it and then I put a turbo on it and ran it for a little while um, and gave that one away. It, it really is a good motor. What Harley has been able to do consistently is every time they have a new engine platform, they had the they had the Evo platform in the 80s and 90s. It was a it was, it was in, definitely in the 90s, maybe crept into the 80s, maybe in the early 2000s. Um, they had the Evo platform, and they had the twin cam platform. Now they have the M8 platform. They're they're improving. They're getting really good. They're getting significantly better than what they were before, and the engines always make more power stock. A lot of times more power than what the modified engines of the, pre the previous engine make. So way more power stock. They're, they're always smoother. And they always have more power capabilities. So you can just modify them way, way more. The stuff we're seeing with the M8 is really mind-blowing. But this is a really great example of a good, streetable um, twin cam. This is one of the last years of the 96 cubic inch and I think in 2010 they were actually in some of the higher level bikes they were actually putting a uh, 103s in there so something interesting about the street glide um, a lot of people like the street glide because they like the fairing they like the radio they like the way it feels but they don't want that uh, old man tour pack although you see a lot of guys buying street glides and putting tour packs on the back which is hilarious no no this is a razor tour pack it's slimline and that's why it's cool. Uh, what's funny about the Street Glide is the original Street Glide, the bike that came out before the Street Glide, was the Electric Glide Standard. And that came out in like the, uh, I might be wrong about this, but I think like, like the late 90s. And it was a base Electric Glide that had no radio, um, and it had really no chrome, it was all just metal finish, and it had no, had no tour pack. So basically, it looked like a street glide, except for it just wasn't as refined, and it was kind of like the cheap version of it. A couple years later, I think in 2006 is when the street glide came out. Harley's like, let's do it again, but let's make it, let's let's spice it up a little bit. Let's put some chrome on that thing. Let's make it look cool. Let's make the bags a little bit lower. And they did that, and for whatever reason, people were like, this is awesome. I love it. 
greatest Harley Davidson ever made ever in the entire world and it's been one of their it might still be but it's been one of their best-selling motorcycles since it came out so some more modifications about this bike is they've got the stereo completely redone different aftermarket unit you see that normally these are like uh, boat units because they're waterproof and they fit inside there he's got the upgrade uh, Harley Davidson sound system I'm sure it's gonna sound amazing um, he kept it simple with just those speakers no no tweeters no no speakers in the back it's a nice clean uh, it's a nice clean setup now with these mini apes it is a good it's not it's not my preference I like beach bars. I want my bars to be right here. I want my bars to be right here. Um, but but this is a good level depending on how tall you are or how you sit. My rule of thumb is I, I don't really want my hands above my shoulders. I don't want them like this. I don't want them like this. This is a this is probably the high on the higher side of what I would prefer. But this is not bad. This is not bad. It's comfortable. Um, so I can see why a lot of people appreciate this. So if you're looking, if your budget is in this range and you're looking for like, and you're thinking about, I want more power, I want to buy, I want to buy a street, or let's say you already have a street glide, you already have a street glide, and you want to see what it costs to get to that next power level, that's that's basically what it's going to be. You're looking around five or six thousand bucks to hit that stage four. Is that worth it? You decide. I mean, I'm going to make, I'll, I'll make my decision. My Road King, my 2021 Road King with the M8 uh, and the 131, I've got 140 horsepower and 140 foot-pounds of torque, and uh, it's not even enough. I need more. So we're going, we're going right to 200 horsepower, 200 foot-pounds of torque. So for me, if this was me, if this was my bike, I'd have kept it. I'd have kept it stock. I'd have kept it way more closer to stock because this this level of performance is not in my mind it's not doing it for me so it's it's not that different than just having it the way it is but there's a lot of people out there who are like no I want they want that they want that 100 horsepower 100 foot pounds of torque uh, that that's enough for them uh, for me it's either stock or just go all the way and just take take this train as far as it'll take me which is gonna be that's it's expensive it's definitely expensive and guys this wraps up the video We're right here from tennessee next time i'll see you guys we'll be back in pennsylvania check out this next video right up here you're gonna love it we'll see you guys next time and remember it is not what you're riding but where are you going it's beautiful out here isn't it Let's see if we can get on zero to 60. pretty fast I climbed pretty quick and that start was soft that was a that was an easy light start not trying to burn the clutch not trying to smoke a tire not bad <laughs>